Greetings dear friends, I present to your attention the most common malfunctions and breakdowns that occur on the Volkswagen Jetta. As convinced by the manufacturer, all Jettas can only be front-wheel drive, but there are enough fans reworking cars with the installation of all-wheel drive DQ500 boxes and 2.0 TSI and 2.5 TSI engines. They can be found on the internet, but it's almost impossible to find them on sale. And this is good. Ordinary stock cars in terms of transmission me mechanics are unpretentious and quite reliable. Of course, if you do not turn the panis in reverse and do not skid on the asphalt. Well, as a last resort, CV joints, covers and even the sticks of the drives themselves can be bought separately and not in the form of an all-wheel drive assembly. There are a lot of manual transmissions on the Jetta, 5-speed OAF and OA4 for lower engines, 6-speed O2 Q, OAJ and O2S for more powerful gasoline and diesel engines. The most troublesome is the manual gearbox with the weakest 1.6 liter engine. The basic 5-speed gearboxes do not differ in excess of trend and if the driving style is too active, they easily fail. The most serious problems are with the differential and usually they end with a breakdown and the exit of the axis of the satellites for a walk through a gap in the case. Often due to varying wear, the output shout begins to whine. This usually happens with runs under 200,000 km or for those who do not change the oil but drive actively. There is no need to be afraid of synchro mesh wear with the quiet driving style, although the same racers may earn their resource when they run up to 100,000, so cars with 5-speed gearboxes should be checked carefully when buying. Most likely the gearbox wear will be significant. 6-speed gearboxes belong to more reliable and durable series. True, even here the differentials do not differ in a large margin of safety, they do not tolerate dirty oil and active slip well. Troubles with the variance of the output shaft are also possible, but much less frequently than with previous boxes. Dual mass flywheels on 2-liter gasoline and on all diesel engines cannot boast of a resource. Their design is simple, but unfortunately not very durable. Tapping at the start and when driving at minimum revolutions is an unambiguous reason for replacement. Automatic transmissions of the Jetta were not deprived either. The favorite automatic transmission among Russian owners is the 6-speed 09G ICN TF60SN, which was installed on cars with 1.6-liter engines. Rare Americans in our country were equipped with this box in different versions, including cars with engines of 2.0 and 2.5 liters. The 6-speed robot DQ250 was installed on jets with diesel engines and supercharged 2-liter petrol engines. The rest of the motors relied on the DQ200 7-speed robot, which by the time the model was finished had a far from good reputation. It was also installed with European naturally aspired 1.6 FSI and supercharged 1.4 TSI. The Eisen automatic machine is deservedly loved by the people. It is moderately reliable, withstands typical errors in operation well, but it cannot be called completely problem-free. The Japanese sold to the Germans a rather modern design with a good safety margin of mechanics but with a capricious weld body. Traditionally for Eisen it doesn't lack dirty oil and is very difficult to repair. The situation is complicated but two more nuances. The Germans completely removed the oil change from the technical regulations and installed a simple heat exchanger in the cooling system. A thermostat was also added to its circuit, which allowed the motor to heat the box, but didn't allow it to cool normally, heating the automatic transmission oil to more than 120 degrees. With the age, the heat exchanger became clogged with the deposits and ceased to perform the cooling functions completely. I note that in the absence of normal maintenance, the real resource before the first problems appears is 90-120,000 km. This is followed by a series of large or small repairs, as luck would have it. Often unprofessional service leads not only to high cost but also to the complete inoperability of the unit. A lot has been said about DSJ boxes too. Almost all have already been renovated and not once. The main problems of the mechanical part have been eliminated, the mechatronics have been updated but they are still far from ideal, and the mileage is large, so the chances of re-repairing are not illusory. But the prices for repairs have decreased by almost an order of magnitude. Specialized services are relatively inexpensive to eliminate animal functions and there are now enough contract units. And yet you shouldn't be overjoyed. The mechanics of the box, even after putting in order, serve up to 250-300 thousand kilometers, and the bulk of the cars have more than half of the resource already exhausted. The possibility of minor breakdowns grows with each kilometer of run, and the chances of global breakdowns when pieces of forks hit the gears, bearings or differential breakdown remain. 
If the unit was changed or it underwent a comprehensive repair, then there are much less reasons for concern. The chances of getting for repairs in this case are moderate, the resource and cost of the clutches do not cause much discomfort. If the mechanical part was changed in pieces, the mechatronics remained old, but the hydroaccumulator pump and solenoids were replaced, the wiring was restored and the software was updated, then surprises can be expected further. It is quite possible that you will have to deal with complex repairs, and its cost will be comparable to the price of a car. It is good that the diagnostics of the gearbox is how is now performed efficiently, you can fairly accurately access the condition of the clutches and mechatronics without opening the gearbox. The situation with the DQ250 is noticeably better, since the box itself has a more stable resource from the outset. The jetta of early releases until 2007 have a series of boxes with a set of childhood diseases, and their runs are quite serious. So you can already be prepared for trouble, especially considering that it is impossible to blindly believe the mileage on the odometer, it can be reeled off many times, and 250-300,000 km is a significant value. In general, it is imperative to listen to the bearings, check the oil and magnets. And more recent cars can also throw surprises. Still, age 10 years is a respectable age. But with high-quality service, frequent oil changes and clutches replaced on time, the DQ250 can work for a long time without much cost. Since the car is built on a global platform, all motors are our old acquaintances. The main engine of the Jetta is an 812 1.6 liter engine of the BSE BSF series. There are also a number of cars with 1.4 TSI engines in versions for 122-170 forces. Most often these are junior CAXA, very rarely powerful motors of the CAVD VLG series. True, there are very few survivors among them. Surprisingly, there are 1.6 FSI engines of the BLF series. There are several times less of them than 8 well ones, but there are chances to buy a car with such an engine instead of the usual BSE. Be careful, these motors are much more worse in terms of their characteristics. Engines in the big block with a volume of 1.8 2.0 liters are literally sporadic. American 2.5 liter engines are also rare. The main diesels are 1.9 liter BKC, BXE and BLS with unit injectors. Less common are 2 liter BKD, BMM and CBDB diesels of the same volume with common rail on cars since 2008. As I already said, the wiring of the car on this platform is complicated, anti-theft systems are advanced, and the quality of the engine compartment is not the best. This cumulatively increases the number of problems caused by wiring faults with age, and fixing such problems will not be cheap. Almost all engines have overly complex crankcase ventilation systems, moreover not of the best materials. At the age of 10, they receive a complete revision with the replacement of sprawling tubes with new ones, replacement of valves and cleaning of deposits. Otherwise, motors do not have any specific general problems. The main Jetta engine, the good old BSE BSF, is an 812 with conventional distributed injection with a timing belt and generally without any modern technology at all. But reliable and resourceful. No wonder that it was chosen by almost all buyers of these cars. For a Jetta, it is a little weak, but this disadvantage pays off in simplicity and economy. And in urban conditions, in combination with a fairly agile automatic transmission, there is no particular negative among drivers. Complaints arise mainly when moving on the highway, when overtaking and when driving with a trailer. Taxi drivers come across cars with mileage of 600-800 thousand kilometers and engines without overhaul, although during normal operations the resource is two times less and is more often limited by oil appetite. Motors of the EA113, EA827 family are quite numerous. In the family, a group of engines with a volume of 1.8 2.0 liters stands out in a cast iron block with 20 valve cylinder heads, which have shown themselves to be powerful and reliable. But the very popular 1.6 liter 8 valve engines and the less well known atmospheric 2 liter FSI engines with 8 and 12 valves are also representatives of this family. In atmospheric engines, I like supercharged ones, the block is aluminum and the liners are dry cast iron. The 8 well versions have a simple cylinder head and a timing drive without a phase shifter, while the 12, 12 well versions have the same as the TSI supercharged engine. By the youngest in the family, the 1.6 liter unit turned out to be a real hit. His piston group is quite successful and the rings can lie down only if you don't twist it at all and pour inferior oil and change it every 15,000. 
With an automatic transmission and normal replacement intervals for at least the original oil, the oil appetite begins to progress with runs for 250-300 thousand. The injection and ignition systems are extremely reliable, and if something happens, everything is cheap and repairs will not ruin. Only the release is a little capricious. The manifold cracks and with regular cold starts and poor gasoline, the catalyst clogs. However, no serious problems can be expected from this site. The timer resource of 90,000 is more than sufficient, and the cost of the belt and rollers is such that it can be changed even once every 60,000, it will not hit the budget. There is simply no EGR on BSE engines, and if so, then there are no problems associated with it. Small problems in the form of leaks and the intake, a weak crankcase ventilation system and unsuccessful thermostat, TPS failures, agent of high voltage fires, leaks or wear of the thermostat are constantly present, but specialists of a good service know which gaskets to change and when to do it. Where are the intake cracks the collector, how and where the intake seal rings are jammed, where they forget to put on the hose, where the corrugations crack and where to look for the roots of problems in general, and the price of such breakdowns is low. And even the breakdown turns out to be serious, its elimination will not be as painful as it would be when repairing other engines. There are many options for a piston group for repair, it costs all a penny. However, this applies to any spare parts for these motors. The 1.6 FSI engine, which belongs to the EA111 family, is nowhere near as good. Many are attracted by the timing chain, but this is just its biggest drawback. Otherwise, its problems are the same as those of the 1.4 TSI engines. In fact, BLF engines differ from them only in that the piston never drain into the sump, and in general the engine is simpler due to the lack of turbocharging. The problems with the chain are exactly the same as those of the 1.4 liter engine. The same timing feature with rockets, the liners also work at the limit, and even the NOx of the piston on a cold engine is the same as that of the CFNA on the Polo Saturn. The direct injection system here is the very first sample, with poor starting qualities in the winter, with very tough work at low load and a number of childhood diseases that can only be treated with a large-scale alteration. Diesel engines on a Volkswagen Jetta are rare, but you can find a car with them if you want. Diesel engines have good performance, but most of them are equipped with unit injectors, which can be pretty nerve-wracking. Unfortunately, the cost of repairs and the shortcomings of this generation of fuel equipment can scare off even the most loyal fans of diesel power. On this, information about the problems of the Volkswagen Jetta is exhausted. If you know more or disagree with what you heard, I'm waiting for you in the comments.